praise the name of the Lord. Nashukuru Mungu kwa kunipea nafusa hii ili niweze tuweze kushiriki neno la Mungu pamoja. Nashukuru pia viongozi wa kanisa hili kwa sababu pia kunikubalia nikaweza kuja hapa ili tukaweze kushiriki neno la Mungu jioni ya leo. Kwa hivyo wache tuombe baba wetu ulie juu mbinguni tunakushukuru wakati huu kwa sababu wewe ni mwema na wewe ni mwingi wa rehema kwetu. Twaendelea kunyenyekea miguuni pako mfalme wa falme, Bwana wa mabwana. Tukinjikabidhi mikononi mwako mimi na wapendo ambao watasikia neno lako. Bwana ukaweze kunena nasi katika jia ya ajabu. Roho mtakatifu awe mwalimu kwetu na anene na kila mmoja wetu katika jina la Yesu Kristo nimeomba na hata kuamini amen eh wapendwa nashukuru Mungu kwa wema na fadhili zake na kwa hivyo jioni ya leo ningetaka tuweze kushiriki katika neno lake Mungu kwenye haswa kitabu cha Job lakini kabla ya hiyo ningetaka tuweze kusoma neno la kutangulizi nalo linapatikana katika kitabu cha Sam ama Zaburi kumi na moja mstari wa tatu ni vizuri kuweza kuangalia hiyo kitabu Saburi 11 verse number 3 na niko na NIV version na Biblia inasema when the foundations are being destroyed what can the righteous man do when the foundations are being destroyed what will the righteous man do it was david who spoke these words and when he spoke he had a challenge in his life As we all know everybody has his own foundation there is somewhere where you treasure you are maybe your property there is somewhere where your life is and therefore because david was facing challenges He asked that question when the foundations are being destroyed what will a righteous man do in other words when somebody faces afflictions when you face all trials and temptations he is asking what will a righteous man do and who is this righteous man a righteous man as far as the bible is concerned is somebody who has been justified by faith in Christ Jesus and therefore i can say Somebody who is righteous is somebody who is saved because of God's grace not because of doing anything not because of doing good works not because you have done something that can deserve you to be called righteous but by faith in Christ alone We are justified. 
When we run to Christ and acknowledge who he is, we repent all our sins, then we are justified by faith. Nobody who can say that he has bribed God, that he has become righteous, none, none. And we cannot bribe God. God does not need anything from us, but he wants our obedience. We obey his word. Now, a good example to talk about is the book of Job. I know we have all read the book of Job, Kitabu Hiki Chayubu. This book of Job, we can see a true faith in the midst of suffering. If I can speak of somebody who suffered in the Bible, more than anybody else is Job, somebody called Job. Job suffered and lost all his belongings. And even his body was afflicted with the source. In all this suffering, Job did not curse God or blame him or charge him with any wrongdoing. In the later part of Job's life, God prospered him, God blessed him, and he was blessed more than with the blessings more than the ones he had before. Therefore, the purpose of this book today is to encourage all Christians of all time periods to stand firm and be faithful to God despite the challenges they face every day. I would say God is in control. He is on the throne. He can see what you are going through even today. He will answer our prayer because God answers prayer. And therefore, my message today is based here in chapter 14 of Job. Job chapter number 14 is where this message is based. We can turn there. Those who are watching me and they have their Bible with them, we can look here in John, Job chapter 14, verse number 7. Job 14, verse number 7, verse 7, verse 8, and verse 9. At least there is hope for a tree if it is cut down. It will sprout again and its new shoots will not fall. Its root may grow old in the ground and its stump die in soil. Verse number nine. Yet at the scent of water, it will bud and put forth shoots like a plant. The reason why I started reading the, the Psalms chapter 11 verse 3 is to support what Job went through. And I say Job is a good example I take 
when it, his foundations were shaken, what did he do? He did not curse God. He did not say anything evil about God. He did not complain. And he kept his mind focusing on his howler and the perfect of his faith. That is God. At times we have read where even his wife told him to curse God and die. And the ones of Job, as he, rep he responded to his wife, said, how do you always expect only good things from God and not bad? This teaches me that Job was a mature believer that he knew their afflictions must come, that he knew suffering are there, that on earth problems arise, people face challenges, and indeed Job faced a lot of painful challenges that none even today has gone to that extent of Job. Yet Job stood on his ground and he knew his God. And that's why he says in Job chapter 19 verse 25 that I know my Redeemer liveth and I know that very well. Hey, it's a challenge, brothers. Yoni changamoto ku. That Alizema anajua mkombozi wako yuko. Mkombozi wake yuko. Nandiposa hawezi kutingizwa. He said, and I know that very well. Job 19 verse 25 going downwards. And I wish all of us we can continue to love God despite what we are going through. Therefore, my message is there is hope. After him suffering, where we have just read in Job chapter number 14, verse number 7, he said, there is hope, even if a tree is cut down. Kuko na matumaini, ya iyo, munti kuchipuka tena. Nilipo soma, hapa, nikagumbuka nilitembea kwa shamba ya kahawa, tulikiwa na mze mwingine alikuwa, hako na shamba la kahawa kubwa. Nikaona kienda hakikata ile miti ambao ya kahawa, ambao imezaeka izai kahawa mzuri. Imekaa kama inakauka, nyauka, inakauka. Uyo mzee alipo kuwa hakikata nikamuliza wata yudui. Akadiambia nataka kukata hii mti ya kahawa. Kwa sababu utachipuka tena na ukichipuka tena utasaa. Kahawa ya kutosha. So, naendelea kukata imiti yote. Nandiposa njobu anasema, there is hope for a tree when it is cut down that it will sprout again. And nilipo kuwa nafikiria mambo haya, nika kumbuka kuna muimbaji, kwa imbaji wanasema, hmm, neke dhunduku, Kimedhundukwa, ayubu aliweza kupitia manjaribu mengi. Lakini mungu wakasimama na yeye na akadhunduka tena. Hata kama mali yake iliisha, 
It was a tree cut down. But still God is in, on his throne, is in control. And this message is for us today, my brothers, my sisters. I don't know whether when the foundations, when they are destroyed, whether we are easily, whether we are going to give up, or whether we are going to stand firm, like Job being a good example, I don't know. Because challenges are there, and we have to encounter them. And these challenges come on our way. Today, COVID-19 is there. Tunangalia tunasikia ya kwamba na ambari na ongezeka siku baanda ya siku. Challenge ulimwengu mzima. Changamoto hata ya kifedha. Economic crisis. Imekua kwa ulimwengu mzima. All of our people have lost their lives. COVID-19. Watu wanalia hakuna pesa. Mashule yetu tumefu, ya mefungwa. Na sasa imekuwa ni njambo ambao limekuwa ngumu. Kuna companies nyingi simefungwa. Watu wengi wamekoza ajira. Wamekoza kasi. Wamezimamishwa kasi. Kwa sababu ya hii challenge ya COVID-19 imekuwa ni changamoto kila mahali na kwa hivyo watu wameanza kusema ah, tumeumia 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 kuna wengine wamesahau kuomba kuna wengine wanaendelea kuomba lakini unajua when tunapokutana na changamoto hili we should know atunja kutana na changamoto kama ya ayubu ayubu alimaliziwa mali yake yote ayubu utajiri wake wote ayubu mwili wake ukapigwa na vidonda but i thank god for job Alizema nilikuja kwa dunia hii nikiwa sina kitu na nitarudi kwa Mungu vila kitu Let the name of the Lord be praised Oh my Such a hero Mtu ambaye alikuwa na imani tunaomba Bwana imani ikafike kama ile ya mtumishi njo ya kwamba hakumkana Mungu kwa sababu ya mambo yaliyomtokea. Na kwa hivyo tunaomba Mungu aweze kutusaidia na tuweze hata kama misingi yetu inatingizwa. Hama kama tunapata hata temptations, challenge temptations, eh? Trials These are our foundations. Wakati zinatingizwa. Wakati tunaona mambo fulani hayaenda kama vile tunataka. Wakati tunaona as if things are falling apart on every side. What can we do? I thank again David for giving us Psalms 121. Tuinue macho yetu kwa Mungu. Can we run there? Psalm 121. Tusikie, tuko hapa tuelimishwe na neno la Mungu. 
Saburi Miyamoja Ishirini Na moja Tusikie vile 121 verse 1 to 4 The Bible says I left my eyes to the hills Where does my help come from? Verse number 2 My help comes from the Lord The maker of heaven and earth Verse number 3 He will not let your foot slide he who watches over you will not slumber. And verse number four. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Mutumishi wa mungu anasema, ntainua macho yangu. Musanda wangu utatoka wapi. Majibu ni msaanda wake unatoka kwa Mungu aliyeziumba mbingu na nchi na vyote viliomo and he will not let you be ashamed even if kuna kuwa na changamoto Mungu you pamoja na watu wake Na Biblia inatuambia hata kama mambo yanapokuwa mangumu the one who watches over Israel Israel was the chosen generation who knew who God they are God We are Israelites today we are Christians who knows who God is in our lives So he will not let us be ashamed when the foundations are being shaken on every side, when we face problems of every type, every kind, then let us lift our eyes onto Jesus, who is the author and the perfecter of our faith. To Zoena to some Saburi. Mia moja kwanzia mstari wa kwanza handi wa ine na hata kama mambo yanapokuwa mangumu tujue ya kwamba ni Mungu anataka kutupeleka another level This week I've been doing studies in the book of Revelation and uh, I understood revelation. John was revealed by God. And he was told to go and announce to the seven churches in Asia Minor about the persecution which they were to face near future. And he went and told the seven churches in Asia Minor that do not fear even when you face persecution because you have refused to worship the emperor. Emperors are demanding worship and therefore do not fear though you may be persecuted. And he encouraged the church. And when he encouraged the believers during his time, then the believers were to stand firm because already the prophet of God has brought the voice, has spoken the oracles of God, has told them that there are persecutions ahead of you. So do not give up. Stand firm to the end and know that God is watching and know that in the future God will prove himself who he is. Therefore, persecutions 
were there to the seven churches, to Christians who refused to worship the emperor. Emperor Nero demanded worship, Emperor Dominician eh, demanded worship, and many other emperors. They wanted to be deity, to be God, to be worshipped. But God spoke to his prophet John and told him to go and tell the Christian to resist from worshipping the emperors. And when they review, God manifested himself, when we stand firm, God proves himself and shows himself. Anatuonekania. Tunapopitia hata sisi maambo mangumu. Mungu anatuonekania. Kumbuka wakati stifi ni nae, alipigwa mawe na akauwawa, fast mataya. In Jerusalem, the church dispersed. Stephen aligongwa mawe mpaka akafa. Na kwa hivyo, believers dispersed, they went everywhere, in every corner. <coughs> but I tell you, persecution can take us to another level. When believers went to every corner, maybe it was the plan of God that they started witnessing Christ wherever they went. When people are saying, oh, believers who are persecuted, Stephen has already been stoned. Then the power, the church, and the power to continue with the gospel. And God knew. He was watching. Even when Stephen was being stoned. I was talking with my members last week about the persecution. And they told me, how can God allow these persecutions? I told them, persecutions are there to take believers to another level. When you face persecution of any kind, know that there are blessings ahead of you. And don't give up. Stand firm because when you stand firm, God will prove himself. He proved himself because now we have heard the gospel due to this passion of believers who are in Jerusalem. And now here we are. The gospel has reached unto us. Believers, know that God is with us. And I pray that we will stand firm and Jesus will destroy every scheme of the enemy on our way. Every enemy, all the, all what the traps we are set. Traps are set to destroy us. But Jesus will destroy all the schemes of the enemy. In the letter to the church, 1 John chapter number 3, verse number 8, the letter to the church, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, the Bible says, <clears throat> For this reason, part C of it. For this reason, Jesus was manifested to destroy all the works of the devil. The devil has been a liar from the beginning. The devil has been in doing evil from the beginning. But because God loves us, his son, Jesus Christ, was manifested to destroy all the works of the enemy, Satan. And it is my prayer that all the works of the devil, satanic works, 
satanic weapons, evil principalities of darkness, Jesus will destroy. His omnipotent God is all powerful, and He will destroy all the works of the devil. If at all we cling to Jesus, who is the author and the perfect of our faith, you see the enemy has entered in families. Nivita tu kwanjami. Na tunaposikia yale yanatokea kwa jamii watu unasikia wana, wameua mtu ameua yule mwingine mama ameua mzee mzee ameua mama mama ameua mtoto wengine wameenda kutupa watoto huko kwa mapipa problem ni kubwa we pray Mungu baba tusaidie jamii zetu sikae katika upendo Na tuweze kuwa na ile upendo ambao tumeamuriwa na Biblia tukae na. Shetani ni mchanja. Na skimsi sake ameweka ametuwekea mitego all of us who believe. Na ametuwekea mitego ili injiri isiendelee. He has put all these traps to hinder the propagation of the gospel. Because he knows his days are few. They are limited. So he is trying all he can. But I pray believers that we will continue to serve God despite their the affliction, despite the trials and the temptation, neno la mungu litaendelea. Hata kama tunapikwa vita, vita sio vietu, vita ni vya buwana. Daundi alisema hivo, vita ni vya buwana, sio vietu. Nandiposa unaona alipo enda kupigana na angolia. Daundi alipiganiwa na mungu. Lakini ushindi akaambiwa ushindi ni wako Daudi. Akaua ile giant ambaye ilikuwa inatisha dunia wakati huo. Tunaomba Mungu aendelee kuharibu kila madhibahu. Kila kazi ya shetani. Shetani amejenga madhibahu kwa Hata makanisa amejenga madhiba hata kwa jamii amejenga madhiba yake hata kwa serikali amejenga madhiba yake kila mahali but i say this tumuombe mungu hakuna maombi ya kutupa kwa dust bin Tumuombe Mungu na Mungu ataweza kuharibu nguvu hizo zote. Ndio unaona hata makanisa makanisani kuko na confusion. Makanisani kuko na vita. Hii ni njia moja ya, kuwa, ya kusuia watu wasikuje waokoke. Makanisani kuko na masengenyo nyingi. Hiyo ni njia moja ya kuzuia watu wasimjue Mungu. Lakini Anaye muomba Mungu, Mungu atamfunulia. Kwa hivyo ninapokaribia kwenda kumaliza, na waomba wapendwa ndugu zangu na ndanda zangu. Kuko na matumaini kwa maisha yako. Na tumaini lile tuko nalo. Tumaini ni jambo ambalo tunapenda litendeke na hii tumaini hope there is hope 
hata kama unapitia wapi ama wapi ama mambo yameharibika hapa na pale kuko na tumaini mambo yatakuwa sawa and it is my prayer that when you continue serving god wakati mawimbi yananguruma pande hii na pande hii sijui foundation yake imekuwa shaken pande gani lakini biblia inatuambia kuko na tumaini ya mambo kuwa sawa hata covid 19 tunajua it's for just a season mambo yatakuwa sawa economy ya dunia itakuwa sawa na watu wanapoendelea na imani Mungu atawatetea kuna maneno matatu ambao ni marafiki kari, wa karibu sana kwa yule mwingine mambo hayo hiyo tumaini ni moja hope is one faith is another one because wakati unapokuwa na matumaini then ni lazima uwe na ile faith na faith naye ni kuwa na uhakika ya ile kitu haunja experience wala haunjaona lakini huko na imani ya kwamba jambo hilo huko na imani kwake litatendeka and you know the bible says in hebrews chapter 11 verse number 6 without faith it's impossible to please god and therefore hope naye anaingilia pale mtu huyu anaitwa tumaini naye anaingilia pale tumaini ni kuamini ya kwamba ama kutarajia ya kwamba kile kitu unataka ama lile njambu unataka litendeke litatendeka litatendeka kuamini ama kutarajia ile njambu unataka litendeke litatendeka you hope for i hope all is well hiyo ni kumaanisha napenda mambo yote yawe sawa and because our hope is anchored in Christ Jesus as the author of Hebrew says it will be done praise the name of the lord hallelujah and another friend one who is hope another one who is faith these are good friends and another one is love love you can find this in first corinthians chapter number 13 Chapter 13 you will find it verse 13 1 Corinthians 13 verse 13 it talks about love and he says all other things will can be can run away all other things can be put aside but the three remains love faith and hope first corinthians chapter 13 verse 13 therefore when we have love we will continue to conquer because god will command his blessings in our midst believers will become winners and as you know when we win we announce winners and when we announce winners we believers we believe that 
the Lord has, has fought for our battle. The Lord has fought on our side, but we are, we declare, we are declared winners. I thank God because hope will never disappoint you as a believer. Hope will never disappoint you. And if you want to know, this is, this is found in the book of Romans, chapter number 5, verse 5. Hope, when we are in Christ Jesus, will never disappoint us. So I encourage you, brothers and sisters, that all is well, all is not lost. As I have interacted with some, some people, and they have told me, it seems as if God is away from them. I told them, no, 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 he is on the throne. And I tell them, oh, it's not lost. God will restore what has been taken by the enemy. So, one of the conditions I give them is to anchor themselves onto God. Anchor unto God. You know, Job, as we are talking about him, he has challenged me. And I came to discover true faith is not affected by circumstances. We know all the situation. The situation was war. And he was weak even in his body. And he suffered. But do you know, his faith was not affected by the situations which were around him. Therefore, True faith is not affected by circumstances. He stood as a man of God. And he did not curse God. Though his body was afflicted, he did not curse God. Though his wealth was taken by the enemy, he did not curse God. Though his children died, he did not curse God. Oh my. True faith is not affected by circumstances. Are there challenges in our lives, brothers and sisters? Are there challenges? Yes, of course, there are. As a believer, I cannot tell you that everything is smooth. But I can tell you, whenever you, ca you count any trial of any kind, my brother, I tell you, stand firm. And James challenges me. He says, my brother, count it as a pure joy when you face trials of all kinds. And I think... James was in his spirit when he said these words because he knew after you face trials, temptations, suffering, you are going to be elevated to a higher level. Mjungaji James, Apostle James, and Anifraisha. People, wananza <laughs> kushanga. My brother, how can I go through? the temptations, eh, trials, ni kutane na njambungumu alafu niambie ni furai. Lakini the mature Christian should know that when you see this suffering,
trials, temptations. They are going to take you to another level. So, James tell you, count it as a pure joy when you face this. <laughs> oh my God. And you know, wakati tunapofurahi hata wakati mambo yanapokuwa mangumu, tunamwaivisha shetani. Paulo na Sila wakati walishikwa wakiwekwa ngelezani, wakawekwa ngelezani wakaanza kuimba wakaanza kumuimbia Mungu na kumpea Mungu zifa shetani alianza kuibika na ndipo unaona ishara na miujiza ikafuatana nao katika ngeresa one way to defeat the enemy satan is when we start pressing our god despite the challenges That is one way to overcome. That is one way ya kumwaibisha shetani. Yanapokujia na angali tuendelee kusimama kindete kwa Mungu, shetani anasikia mbaya. My brother Nehemiah alisema, the joy of the Lord is your strength. He told us few Jews. In Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10, Nehemiah said, The joy of the Lord is our strength. Wakati tunafanya njambu na mungu wa nafrai na iyo njambu, inakuwa ni nguvu kwetu, inatutia mafuta, tuendelee mbele na tuendelee mbele na tuendelee mbele. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. It is my strength, it is your strength to go extra miles. Hallelujah, praise the name of the Lord. It is my humble plea to encourage you, brothers and sisters, to continue Serving God and doing the work you are, you are your work, doing your businesses in order for you to earn a living for your daily bread. Nilikuwa kwa mtu moja kaniambia mchungaji mimi sasa nilivutu wa kazi. Kwa sababu ya COVID-19, nikamuambia ata kama ulivutu wa kazi, inafaa ufikiria mzuri. Hapa ata ukija uwanza kuuza nyanya, uuza maindi, uuza mayai, uuza sukuma. Jami yako itakula na itakunywa. Lakini unapokaa ukilia oi mambo imeharibika oi mambo imeharibika Hausaindiki ndugu Hausaindiki ndanda All is not lost Mungu amekupea akili timamu sound mind Sio kwa sababu kazi iliisha huko sababu ya kobe ndi unasema utakaa chini uwe aindo Na unataka kula, kukunywa, na hata kufaa. Do your work. Na uki, unapofanya kazi, hile unafanya mungu anajua yale unapitia. Na mungu atakubariki. Na mungu atakuonekania. So, don't tell me all is lost. All is not lost. I told them. Arise. Do not be idle. Stop crying. Seeing that everything has fallen apart. Please, move forward. Do not... Usiangalia yale ya mepita. Kama bile pauru anatuambia katika kitabu ya wa Filipi. Let us press forward. 
and look what is ahead. And we will achieve our goals. Namaliza kwa kusema hivi. Eh. Kuko na hawa watu ambao wako na mamlaka. Kuna mtu aliitwa Martin Luther King Jr. Na Martin Luther King Jr. said this. If you can fly. If you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, crow, tamba. And they said, but in whatever you do, keep on moving. Don't be stagnant. But in whatever you do, keep moving. That is the principle. In whatever you do, keep moving. Do something. Do not be idle. Do something. Even if it is giving you something literal, do it. <laughs> the principle here is that you should not be somewhere just in doing nothing. If you can't fly, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, crow, tamba, na utafikia pale unataka kwenda. Hata yule awezi nini, hata yule ana akitamba, atafika pate ikire anatakuwa nataka pale. Crow. But in whatever a wise saying, this is a wise saying, and I thank God that chochote kile tunafanya, iwe tunafanya injambu, inatufaindisha iko na profit nyingi, iwe ni kidogo, mungu anataka tufanya kitu. Na yeye niko na matumaini. Hope will never disappoint us. Even when a tree is cut down, there is hope for it to spring. There is hope for it to bear branches again. There is hope for it to have fruits. I pray in the name of Jesus that Mungu atatusaidia tuendelee kuwa na matumaini. Tuendelee kuweka matumaini kwake. Awe ndio nguzo letu na tukae tukimtumainia katika jina la baba na la mwana na la roho mtakatifu naomba amen wacha tuombe baba wetu na mungu wetu ni wakati ulio mwema ambao umetupea na tukaweza kusikia sauti yako siku ya leo naomba mtakatifu bwana wetu tuweze kuwa na, na tumaini ni kwa sababu wale waliokuwa na watumaini wamebarikiwa. Na baba unaenda kutenda kwa maisha yao. Wengi wetu wamepitia kipindi kingumu hasa wakati huu. Na njeoba baba tunajua kwamba kuna wale walipoteza kazi. Baba tunaomba wakaweze kupata kazi tena. Tunaomba waweze kunena na hao wafanye kitu ambaye kitakuwa ni faida kwa maisha yao. Tunajua kuna wengine wana, wameumia. Jehova Bwana kwa sababu ya shinda hii ama ile ingine. 
Saidia hao watu wawe na matumaini ya kwamba wewe ni Mungu na wewe Bwana utawatendea wawe na hiyo imani ya kwamba unaenda kutenda mambo makuu na ni katika jina la Yesu Kristo naomba na kuwabariki amen asante may God bless you as we continue serving God don't don't forget to have your mask with you I have mine here in the pocket and don't forget to sanitize and also keeping distance is good. God bless you. Amen.